Welcome in, everybody. A little special edition of Cap and Trade tonight. Um, I, I had posted up some cap space numbers earlier this week, and I've been getting a lot of questions. And I think you know it's a function of getting some new followers on Twitter and and some new folks to the salary cap um, realm and what I do. And so I thought it just might be a good time to kind of touch on a few of the things, just at a high level, 30,000 foot view of what some of the numbers mean and and the function of them and and what the team may be looking at and going forward so kind of just wanted to touch on a few of those things we'll do a little screen share here and uh take a look at the numbers and just do some quick you know quick descriptions if you got any questions or comments along the way throw them up on the board we'll, we'll i'll try to answer as much as i can uh this won't be too long of a show probably you know 15 20 minutes um but if you don't know me I am Texans Cap. Go by at Texans Cap on Twitter. And uh, this is the Cap and Trade YouTube channel. So follow along if you like what you're hearing. Hit that like button down below. Hit subscribe and let's dive in. So from here, let's see here. There we go. So this is just my spreadsheet. This is my personal spreadsheet that, that I maintain for the Texans. I also do a lot of data entry and, and cap work for over the cap.com. If you're not aware of that, I manage all of the AFC, AFC South teams on that website, all the contract data. And then during free agency in the draft, I do as much as I can. Jason, and I, Jason and I pretty much tag team and get as much data entry as we can through, through those heavy processes. You know, that's a very busy, busy time. Um, you know, during free agency and draft, there's a lot of contracts coming in. So we just kind of tackle it the best we can. But so I tweeted out a picture of this, you know, I, I usually do this about once a week, especially during the season. I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll post out a link of this and, you know, from there we'll, uh, we'll just kind of touch base of what everything means on here. Right. So I've got it zoomed in. So I do, I have different ones I have, formulas galore everywhere right <laughs> a lot of a lot of v lookups h lookups everywhere so i have one built for the off season i have one built for training camp time and i have one built for regular season right so just to you know i tweet this out because i i've tried to tweak it over the years i i've done just straight text into tweets i've done pictures of tables i've done pictures of charts and i felt like this I, I i created this last year so i felt like this was the easy the easiest way to digest the information i don't want it to be too confusing for everybody because i know it can be a bit overwhelming but I also want you to have the numbers and the details that you feel like are that are somewhat important for you right so let me squeeze this down just a little bit so i can see some of the comments on uh on youtube so so what this is so i you know it's got your contract counts, active, adjusted team cap, top twenty, top fifty-one spending, dead money, top fifty-one cap space, draft class hold, effective cap space, cash spending. These are all just important numbers to me. I think that they they should be important numbers to you. And for the sake of what we're looking at doing here, everybody who always asks me how much cap space cap, how many, how much cap space do the Texans have? This is the number you're going to want to look at. This top fifty-one cap space number. 35.9. So this is as of, I know it's got 113 on there. I've got it default to, to the, whatever today's date is, but this was as of yesterday, the team had signed Jalen, Jalen camp to a futures contract. So I put them at 49, 49 players under, under contract for 2023 league year. Right. So they just did future contracts for, I think eight of the practice squad players as they work their way up to 51 players. So the adjusted team cap, what this min number means is there's three, three numbers that come into this adjusted team cap. There's the league salary cap, which we're using a projection of $225.0 million. Um, I feel pretty close to, you know, I feel pretty confident that numbers, the cap number will come in around there. The league doesn't like to do big jumps from year to year they like to kind of stagger things out i think 2024 is when we'll see a little more of a a little more aggressive increase in this in the league cap 
but the but the league is still and the players and everybody they're still borrowing money from future years. They really borrowed a lot of money during the COVID year from future cap, future uh, league years, so that they're having to pay that money back essentially, right? They kind of basically took a loan for themselves on the salary cap and the league and the player and the player association. They they agreed upon the payback, the payback schedule. That's why rookie contracts this past year in 2022, they were only at 1.2% increase from 2021 to 2022 because they had to take money out from different pots to pay for that low league cap year during the COVID year. So that was one of the areas that they pulled money out of. They pulled money out of out of the benefits pot and out of the uh, performance play pot. And there's just all these areas to pay that down. So 225 is the number that we're going to use until we hear differently from the league. We didn't get any estimates at the owners meeting in March or not March. It's not March yet. It's January. In December, um, usually we get some estimates there, but because of the, the Sunday ticket, was not finalized at that time. There was no estimates handed out. Now that the Sunday ticket deal has been finalized with YouTube, hopefully we'll start to see some estimates coming out probably maybe mid to late February um, towards the 1st of March. And then the league year starts on March 15th. So we'll get some hard numbers by the end, by mid-March. But for now, I think 225 is a pretty safe number. That's the same number that Jason's using it over the cap. That's the same number that uh, a lot of my – cat buddies use um there's a lot you know there's a bunch of us out there for specific teams so the adjusted cap like i said it's three numbers it's the league num the league cap it's the carryover it's the annual adjustment so we know 225 and then the team is scheduled right now my estimates were one million nine thousand two hundred sixty five thousand dollars carryover from 2022 that was the remaining cap dollars left over at the end of the year at the end of the regular season i'm sorry and so the tuesday after the regular season's over every team has to submit their carryover numbers 99.9 percent .9 of the teams carry over the 100 percent available to them Every once in a while you get somebody one off like the Rams did one year, the Raiders did one year where they didn't elect to carry over certain numbers. There's a lot of little funky reasons for that. It's to do with practice squad during the playoffs and um, just a lot of things that I don't think we need to get into. So we know the carry, we know the estimated carryover. That's not finalized yet. They're still going through the audits and this number aligns with what field Yates tweeted out. So the third number, the annual adjustment, we don't know that number yet. That number will probably leak out into February, first part of March. And we can do a whole we can do a whole show on the annual adjustment. I stopped doing it because I have access to probably about 80% of the information that goes into that number. I just don't have access to everything. And so I used to bang my head against the wall every year trying to figure out while I was off 40,000, 60,000, whatever the number may be. But we'll get that number probably, like I said, late February, early March, and we'll tack it on here. I, I suspect for the Texans it's going to be a positive number. It's basically a function of the difference between likely to be earned that was earned and not likely to be earned that was earned. And there's unearned incentives in there, unearned um, per game, you know, unearned per game roster bonuses that were considered likely to be to be earned, and then uh, a lot of salary cap credits from salary guarantees early in the year that were offset throughout the year. It's a big old mess. Trust me, it's not something you want to try to calculate. I know many who do. I know Miguel, uh, who covers the Pats, uh, the Patriots. He does it, and he's usually spot on with it. Um, Brian McFarlane with the Ravens, uh, he is usually spot on with it. And I can get pretty dang close, but I like my numbers to be perfect to the to the to the dollar. And it just drove me insane. So I just kind of just sit and wait. Right. So this number will change once we get that annual adjustment and we get a finalized carryover number. The top 51 spending 
That's the 188. That's counting up the salary cap charges for the top 51 players under contract for this team. Anything outside, if you were to rank them, right, dis, uh, descending largest to smallest, you rank them. The top 51, those are the ones that count in the offseason. Anything outside the top 51 don't count. Now, there are some nuances to that, which affects the Texans because of the way contract structures that are set up by Nick Casario. Per game roster bonuses, uh, workout bonuses, uh, likely to be in CERN, likely to be earned incentives for players outside of the top 51, those count towards the cap. But those are usually small numbers. It's usually not a big deal. Um, so as you know, like we said, we only got 49 players under contract. So what I did for the function of this is I put in two placeholder contracts at the minimum, at the minimum value of 750,000. So this is the team will get up to 51 pretty quickly. They're going to got a lot of contracts to sign. So for the sake of this, exercise and what these numbers are on here this assumes there's 51 players under contract dead money as we all know texans had over 70 million in dead money this past year and you know that's just a function of all the uh you know all the leftover unpaid or you know prorated money that was left over from players that were released and uh you know players that were released that had guaranteed salaries and just you know it's a big you know all the restructures they did all that money just is tabulated up as dead money right so we know the team had over 70 million this year huge chunk it's hard to operate when 30 percent 40 percent of your salary cap is tied up in dead money this out I don't have a rundown or anything tonight, so we're just rocking and rolling, free free will in it tonight. So, dead money this year. Currently, this number is going to increase, obviously, but it's it's at only at nine hundred one thousand nine hundred and ninety five, which I think is we can jump over here. I know this is hard to see. Let me zoom in here. It is. It's just these players right here, right? All small numbers. The biggest one is is due to Ross Blacklock, who was traded, you know, to uh, Minnesota last year. So that number is going to change as players are released, signed and released. This number is going to increase throughout the year as the league year goes on. So don't 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 get all excited that the team only has nine hundred one thousand in dead money when we're coming off a year with seventy plus million, right? So. If you take the two twenty, your adjusted cap number, subtract out the top fifty one spending, subtract out your dead money, and there's some other numbers in there. We'll get to that. This is where you get your 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 cap space, thirty five, right? There's another small number. Let me get over to this here. Uh, let me zoom in. There's also this this uh this workout debt number. So that's, that's a default number. Team, the players are paid during organized team activities, which is called OTAs. They're paid based on their experience. It's a small number, but they are paid per day. And so that number doesn't get tabulated until like July during training camp when the OTAs occur in April and May. So for now, the teams will put in a what we call we as the amateur capologist folks we call it the workout debt. So this is just a a number based on eighty players at two hundred ninety. They earn two hundred ninety five dollars a day during organized team activities for this league year. I think it's three fifteen next year in twenty twenty four. So you do thirty two days, eighty players. This is where this number comes in. So that's the number that's subtracted out. But that, that's a constant number. That doesn't change. So this is where we get to, $35 million, right? So a number that I like to add is the effective cap space number. Effective cap space number is essentially the draft class hold my, subtracted out. You know, So the top 51 cap space with the draft class hold subtracted out. And this is where we get our effective cap space. 
to me, this is a more realistic number because the team needs to account for their draft class. Now we do, we have seen, and we see it every year where people or teams, not people, but teams will just get loaded up on their salary cap and maybe they got a, a post June one release coming or something like that. And they don't sign their draft class until like mid June. Right. Even though the draft is held the last weekend of, Feb of, of April, but for the Texans, they have a very large draft class. They have the largest draft class when it comes to, to the, to the point scale. So they're going to have a big number to compensate for. Now, remember what I said, top 51, your top 51 contracts are what count. As your draft, after, as your players are signed, your draft players are signed on. And if they go inside the top 51, whoever was ranked 51st comes out of the equation and a draft player slides into that top 51 calculation. So right now, due to the, the low amount of contracts, I'm having to account for the entire draft class. This draft class hold, as more players are signed, will decrease. Okay, because, and we'll jump over here to, jump over here to the draft info page. So, the anticipated draft pick, or if the Texans stayed at 1.02, the anticipated cap charge for that draft pick is going to be 7.049 million. But if we go all the way down here, we get in these sixth and seventh round guys. Once you once the team starts signing free agents, and then all of a sudden the 51st ranked player on your salary cap is like has a cap charge of probably a million, 1.2 million, something like that. These players are not counting. Their prorated money's counting. Like I said, mentioned earlier, there's some nuances to the top 51 rule. But for the most part, these players won't be counting against the cap because their numbers would be outside of the top 51. So that's why I say you'll see throughout the year, get back to this, you'll see throughout the year, through the offseason, once we get in, once we get through free agency, you're going to see this draft class number go down, which will increase your captive, effective cap space. But the team is going to be spending cap dollars. Now, I know there's a lot of speculation out there about, you know, the team can get to 60, 70 million dollars, things like that. You know, I think we'll we'll probably have a show. We'll do something like this and we'll 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 go into more depth into the calculator that's on OTC and do some theoretical player releases, you know, like maybe a Brandon Cooks trade, uh, an extension with Laramie Tunsil, maybe an extension with Titus Howard, uh, releases of, you know, players like Eric Murray, um, Justin Britt, things like that. Maybe some look at some extensions and we'll kind of go through and see how that affects this number. But I know there's a lot of folks out there that say, you know, the team can get to 60, 70 million. Probably so. If they did start to release a lot of players, you got to replace those players, right? Excuse me. So just keep that in mind as the, as the, as we progress through these next few months leading up to the league year, which starts, I believe, March 15th, the suggested cap number is going to change as we get finalization on the carryover numbers, which I feel pretty good about the number we have at the 1,009,265. But that number will change once we get that number finalized and we get the annual adjustment which I think is going to be a positive number. Some teams, it will be a negative number. Um, there's a lot of teams, you know, that they'll, they try to utilize um, cap growth to capture some of their incentives that they know will be earned, but they were considered not likely to be earned at the beginning of the season. This dead money will increase. This top 51 spending number will increase. Okay, this number will increase for sure as we get into offseason 
and we start seeing Nick Casario and folks start signing folk start signing players. And then this dead money will start jumping up once we see some of those player releases like we talked about with Eric Murray, Justin Britt, you know, some various there's only you know, there's not too many release candidates, in my opinion. Um, I know some folks have some different opinions on that, but so these numbers are going to change throughout the off season. I'll try to keep you updated as best I can, but I just want you to be aware of what all this, what all these numbers mean and where they come from. Right. And then this last one is cash spending. Um, something that I track is the cash spending for a reason. So there's a stipulation in the CBA that teams have to spend 90% of the cap over a three year period. And the, in the previous CBA, it was four years, 89%. This year, this, this CBA, it's 90% over three years. And 2023 will be the third year of this first spending window. So the teams like the, like the bears are going to have to spend a boatload of cash to get to that 90% number. I think it's an astronomical number for the bears. I want to say bread, uh, bread, Brad, uh, Spielberger at PFF, uh, PFF underscore Brad. I think he tabulated and he follows the bears pretty heavily. Um, they had to spend like 160 million in cash this year and new cash that doesn't account for players that are already, already under roster. So we'll take a quick jump over here. So this is my, my little dashboard. And so right now I've got the team at over three years this is a big number, $544 million in cash spending over a three, over a three year period. This is 2021, 2022, and projected for 2023. This number is going to increase dramatically, especially because you got, like we talked about, the big draft cl- the big draft class, and then free agency. So they're already at 88 percent. Like I said, the three year cap requirement. That's if you take the league mandated cap for 2021, 22, 23. Add those numbers up. 90 percent of that. That's the cash spending requirement. It's a crappy rule. It should be 90% of the adjusted cap, right? But it does keep the teams in check. Um, never, I, I don't, not that I'm aware of, of any teams being in default of not meeting this 90% or in the past CBA, 89%. But if you go digging in through the, through the CBA, if the team were not to meet that 90% number, they would, take the offset money and distribute it among all the players that were on the roster during those three years. But as we see, the team is already at, let me increase this a little bit more for you. The team is already at 88.3%. Boy, that's tough to see on there, isn't it? 88, 88.36% is where they're at right now. And that's without draft class and without free agency. So they're easily going to get to the 90%. And Houston has been, historically, they have been below the mean, below the average of cash spending among the league. During the Tunsil extension and Watson extension era, they were number one in the league in cash spending. But they, you know, those two contracts commanded a lot of cash in one year. So... That's, you know, just something to keep in mind. Just keep all these numbers in mind, but that's where the cat, sorry to jump all over the place, but that's what the cash spending is. And that's what I, and that's why I keep up with that because I want to make sure that the team is getting to that 90% number. Um, They'll probably get upwards of around 215 to 230 in cash spending this year when it's all said and done, if I had to guess. Um, Just depends on how aggressive Casario is in, in free agency and how they do their contract structure. So just to summarize, and I, I see we've got a question up on the board, so we'll get to that here in just a second, Travis. I do see your, your question. Um, just to summarize, contracts and active during the regular during the offseason, that number is gonna 
pretty much be the same between the two. I separated them out because once we get into the regular season, you have players on IR, NFI, practice squad, you know, PUP, things like that. So it's total contracts and then players that are on the active 53 man roster. But for the sake of the off season, these numbers will probably stay the same through the whole process once until we get to regular season. Then you got your adjusted team cap. Like we said, it's the league cap, the carryover, and the annual adjustment. We don't have finalized numbers on any three of those, but we're using 225 as a placeholder. We've already got a projected carryover number, and we're waiting on the annual adjustment. Top 51 spending, like I said, 51 player contracts. Anything outside of that doesn't count except for some pro-rated money and uh, per gamers and workout bonuses. Those are pretty small numbers. Dead money, players that are no longer – it can be players that are still on the roster that count towards dead money. You know, like undrafted rookies that sign right after the draft but may not make the final roster and they get re-signed to the practice squad, their initial contract is going to hit that dead money column. So this is just – dead money is just money that's already been paid for, accounted for, calculated for on a contract that's expired. Not a play. It could be a player on the roster, off the roster, right? Like I said, like I've said many a times, salary cap is a an accounting function of cash spending. Okay. <laughs> then we got your top fifty-one cap space, which is this number minus this number minus this number, and that workout debt, like we talked about, to get to this number. You got your draft class hold, which we went through, and that number will change. As we as the team signs more players, because we talked about those players will be bumped out of the top 51 calculation. This is your effective cap number. So when you want to know how much cap space the team has, go check my timeline. It's usually Thursday or Friday. I usually try to tweet out an update. If there's signings happening or things going on, I'll, I'll do quicker updates. Total cap space, effective cap space. This is what the team needs to account for. This is what they have simple it's not let's not make it harder than it is all right so let me remove this here and then um let's see here let me get so travis has a question about reeves maven so let me get the calculator up for otc Jalen Reed, the worst contract I think Nick Casario signed was Jalen Reeves Maven. All right. Let's see here. Let me try to present this over. Share screen. All right. So Travis was asking Reeves Maven should be a release candidate, frees up what, $5 million. So does it free up $5 million. He has a base salary of, let me try to expand this out so it makes it a little bit bigger. It didn't make it bigger at all, did it? It just made it wider. Well, let me see if I get the zoom. There we go. All right. So you can see this better. So he's got a 3.5 sal 3.25 million salary per game roster bonus is 250 prorated money. So his cap number is 4.25, but he has an unfortunately 1.25 1.25 salary 1.25 million dollar salary guarantee. So you add up the prorated money plus the salary guarantee. He's got two million dead money on a 4.25. So the cap savings. Gross cap savings is two point two five million, Travis, not five million. Sorry, buddy. Um, the thing that you're gonna you'll see on my timeline if you're if you're new to following me, I will say either gross cap savings or net cap savings. And what I mean by that is, <laughs> I'll get over it. There you go. Um, he needs to be gone. I mean, you can't, I don't, I just can't fathom paying a, a special teamer this much money. I mean, look at his, look at his snap counts. 
I'm using Google Chrome. I usually use Safari on my computer. That's why you see ads. And I just use Chrome just for StreamYard. I probably should just jump over to Safari. But you can see this 7.5% snap, snap count, 7.5% play time. Now, he's big on special teams, and I'm all for special teams. It's an important factor. But you can't have a player with this much guaranteed salary in year two of the contract for a special teams player. So, like I was talking about, net cap savings, gross cap savings. So, gross cap savings on this one would be $2.25 million. Okay? Net cap savings, like I talked about, you have the top 51. So if you were to release Maven at this, his 4.25 number comes out of that top 51 calculation and another player would slide up in. So if it turned out to be a rookie making the minimum 750,000, you got, let's see here, 2.25 million. Minus 750,000 because he's replacing Reeves Maven in the top 51 calculation. So really, it's a 1.5 million net cap savings. Okay. So you'll see that on my timeline where I'll say it's gross cap savings or it's a net cap savings. When I say net cap savings, it's because you got to calculate for that player replacement in the top 51 calculation. Oh, VT's in here. I know you're going to do restructure examples for Tunsil and Howard, but both restructures should only have a small cap hit. No, they'll have much bigger, much bigger um, cap hits than that. Um, and their 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 minimum salary will be the minimum salary is actually higher than that this year. It, it increases every year. Here, I'll show you real quick, just so you can see. Let me get back to my back to my spreadsheet. So, let me zoom in here. So, this is the P five schedule. So, you'll say another thing is P five. That's paragraph five. It's literally the fifth paragraph in a player contract that has the salary information. That's why it's called P five. So this year, last year, like like v, like Brown Chubby Bear says, one point three five was the minimum. But actually, this year it's going to be one point eight one point zero eight million. Let me try to zoom in a little bit more. Man, the share screen sucks on this thing. So one point zero eight million is the minimum salary for a player with four to six years of credited services. So. But they're, you know, maybe they can bump, get Laramie down to 1.08 million and supplement with, with a, with a large signing bonus to, to supplement the cash. Um, I just don't know that you're going to be able to go down that far with it. I think my, my, my extension proposals got a little bit bigger number in that P5 category. So, same with with Howard. I mean, you could drop him down to 1.08 and. But I think for the sake of what you're asking, BT, is both ex if you did extensions on both players, I think my numbers have a cap savings of around $13 million on Tunsil. Big cash bump, right? Because <laughs> you're paying a big salary uh, uh, signing bonus. But I think it's around 12 to 13, 14 million in cap savings on a on a on the Tunsil extension that I have. Uh, written up I'm, i am done with it i feel pretty confident in it i'll probably get it out here pretty quickly i i don't anticipate houston getting the extension done in in the near future and i say near future like next two or three weeks so I, I would like to go ahead and get it out by the end of the month so we'll we'll go through that and same with howard he's at 13.02 million cap charge this year so I think an extension with him could probably save four or five, six million. So there's there's definitely some cap savings between them two uh, extensions. I'm not sure how the team feels about extending both at the same time. It's a lot of cash to to spend on your bookends like that. But if you got a got a, a rookie co a, another rookie quarterback under contract with with Davis Mills, and you know you can allocate that money elsewhere. So. Um, 
I think that's about it for tonight. You know, hopefully I can do some more of these in the, in the coming weeks. I, you know, this is where I kind of like really geek out and have good time. So I uh, appreciate everybody listening in. I hope, I hope you learned something. And if you got any questions or comments, you know, after the show's over, or you thought of something after the show's over, you know, posted it, post it in the comment section below the video. I, I try to reply to as much as I can. You know, I, I reply pretty well on Twitter as well, but you know, I kind of want to grow the, the community over here. So, um, you know, drop your comment in there. And as always hit the like button on this video down at the bottom, subscribe. It helps the channel out, helps the algorithm as I, uh, try to learn about that. And, you know, let's just continue to make this channel as best we can. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I said, we'll we'll try to do some more of these little one-on-one -on -one sessions through the off season. I know there's a, like I said, I've got some new followers in the past probably two or three months, and and uh, you know, there's probably some new questions. I know some of y'all have been around for a while and have followed me for a while and probably know some of this stuff, but some of the other folks may not. So, you know, we'll try to do these one-on-one -on -one type sessions. Um, like I said, I got some stuff coming up um, the next couple of months. I've got the the, the tonsil extension. We're going to go through roster moves, uh, potentially maybe next Wednesday, depending on how the head coach situation sorts out. And the fun one that I'm really excited about is I have a player agent lined up, uh, Andre Perota. He uh, lives up in Cincinnati. We're actually going to kind of do a, a faux contract negotiation live. Uh, he's a player. He's a player agent, and he's a lawyer, so he's probably going to outsmart me. And he's very good with salary cap. But I'm going to let him be the agent. I'm going to be the team and we're going to kind of just go a little powwow, a little back and forth and do a little negotiation and try to settle on a, on a contract. I had all expectations to do uh, Roquan Smith, but Baltimore ruined that and signed him. So I got to find another player that I want to do somebody who's a potential free agent and somebody who's not a Houston Texan. So we'll get through it. And uh, as always, I appreciate everybody listening in. I appreciate you joining. And uh, if you've got any questions, comments, drop them below the video, hit that like button. And with that, we will call it a night. Everybody have a good evening. Peace.